Welcome back. We are answering your questions about the coronavirus vaccine with Cone Health's Director of Pharmacy and Oncology, Dr. Andre Harvin. You can text your questions to 336-379-5775. Uh, the first question I want to, want to ask you, Doctor, um, is, is with regards to children under 12. Since they aren't eligible for the vaccine yet, should they still be wearing a mask? Yeah, so um, right now that the recommendation, if they are in crowded spaces, um, we're still recommending the use of masks. Um, we're going to follow like the CDC recommendations on that as long until we're essentially told otherwise. Um, so right now, again, as as schools are letting out, there's really not as much of a need for that if they're at home or or kind of with their immediate family members. But uh, my, my recommendation is just to use caution as they're still out and about. So we know that children don't get as negatively impacted by the virus, but they end up being a viral vector, which means they end up spreading it to those that may not be vaccinated in the community. So my recommendation there is just to use caution um, until we find out more about children less than age as well. Kind of along those lines, do you think that parents or older siblings who are fully vaccinated still wear a mask in public settings with kids under 12? So right now the recommendation is that if you're fully vaccinated, you don't need to utilize the mask. Um, I will say sometimes I pick and choose just depending on maybe how crowded the venue is that they, I may elect to put my uh, mask on. Um, but right now, again, we, we um, look at the CDC recommendations that um, in certain events, uh, you're able to go without the mask if you're fully vaccinated. And is full there vaccination, I should say, is, is two weeks after your second dose um, if you're doing one of the, the, the two uh, vaccines. Okay. Um, any update on when this age group might be eligible for the vaccine? Um, I don't have any indication so far. Uh, again, this is the important thing about science in real time is that we want to wait and not necessarily jump ahead of the science. Um, so I'm sure we'll hear more information about whether or not they'll look to even vaccinate um, children uh, under the age of 12 and whether or not um, it's recommended. Uh, so we really don't want to be presumptuous in this aspect. Again, if we've seen it be safe and effective in all of our other age groups, so that may make us think it makes sense to do it in um, children less than 12 but we really want to wait for the science to come out first. Do you know the status of needing a booster shot? We keep hearing that, you know, we might need one down the road. What, do, what kind of information are you hearing? Um, it sounds like uh, it'll, it'll be likely. And um, there's probably a lot of reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons is that um, COVID-19 spreads incredibly fast. And when you have a lot of virus in the community, it also has the opportunity to mutate. Um, what's really good is that the vaccines that are available here in the United States tend to be very effective against most, if not all, the variants that we've seen thus far. And so um, because we really haven't gotten to that full herd immunity, it is very likely that we'll have to do some level of booster uh, within the next few months. Uh, me and myself, that, that took it again at the very beginning, I'm looking at that data pretty much every day, knowing that I have some traveling coming up at the end of the month of whether or not they'll approve it in time for me to get on a plane and fly to another state, or if I'm still feeling like I'm, I'm very well covered going from there. Uh, but I think we'll see more of that information uh, coming out in probably the next uh, couple of months, and then we'll know what to do. A lot of people are wondering about mask wearing and social distancing if you're fully vaccinated. Are there times when fully vaccinated people can or should, excuse me, should wear a mask or social distance if you're fully vaccinated? Yeah, so I'll say if you were coming into a hospital setting like Cone Health, um, if you actually kind of dig down into the CDC recommendations, there are certain venues that it still recommends mask wearing and social distancing. So if you go into most hospital or clinic settings, um, even though that entire staff may be vaccinated, we're still wearing masks and we're still social distancing as much as we can. Um, it's, it's just one of those aspects that we are dealing with people that have potentially compromised immune systems or maybe they're coming in to get the vaccine, but they have not been vaccinated thus far. And so we're still wearing masks and social distancing because we're trying to do what's best for the community. So there are certain situations where, uh, again, if you just feel uncomfortable of, I just don't know if this crowd, crowd is, has a lot of vaccinated people in it, and I just wanna make sure I have extra precaution, then, then go right ahead. But again, as you're fully vaccinated and it's that full two weeks after your last shot is when you're considered fully vaccinated, um, those regulations are much looser. So you don't, you don't have to wear a mask at that point in time. One thing uh, that people who uh, choose not to get the shot use as their reasoning is that the FDA hasn't given full approval to any of the drug manufacturers, their vaccine version. What do you say to that? 
Um, I, I would say that unfortunately that's a that's a bit of a, a misinformation that's out there. So uh, all the vaccines did receive what's called an emergency use authorization. Um, now, most people have never heard of an emergency use authorization, and so um, it makes sense that people somewhat twisted it and there's been some uh, confusion on it. But it does mean uh, an emergency use authorization means that when we're in the midst of a pandemic, just like this, when public health is critical, that it allows the FDA to have these emergency provisions to move forward utilization of a medication that hasn't necessarily gone through um, their previous established processes. Now, what that does not mean is that it does not mean that we have not tested these vaccines to the same degree we would test others. What it means is that we were able to take the vaccine through all of the phases of a normal clinical trial in parallel instead of it being sequential. So normal vaccines or any normal drug that's brought to the market, um, it goes from a kind of preclinical phase and you do that and you look at the data, then you go to a phase one, a phase two, then a phase three. What we did in this instance is that it was allowed to happen pretty much all at the same time. So they were manufacturing this vaccine before they were completely done with all the clinical trials. But again, this vaccine, the basis of it, mRNA, was something that's been established in literature and has essentially been thought to be a great vector for providing vaccines very quickly for almost two decades. So it's not completely brand new. It's not something people have never heard of. There's been a lot of research on how to leverage something like this. And it took a once in a lifetime pandemic for us to bring it out and utilize um, both this mRNA and the emergency use authorization. All right, Dr. Harvin, two segments down, one to go. Thank you again for being here. You can keep texting your questions at 336-379-5775, and we'll be right back.